This week on the 77% Street Debate. In everything that we see around our advertisements, you see a predominantly lighter representation of Ghanaian women. You will get the job, but the payment, there's difference in it. Let's say a light person is taking 5,000 cities, they will give you a dark person 2,000, 3,000. There's a beauty currency, and that's why we need to expand what it means to be beautiful. The 77% is back in Ghana's capital, Accra. And actually this week we're discussing a topic that was suggested by one of you, our viewers. On our YouTube channel, you pose a question, why is it that there are so many horrendous beauty standards? We want to find out what exactly horrendous means, if they affect young Africans and how. And to begin with, I'll be speaking to Dr. Emilia. She's actually a doctor of sociology here in Ghana and she spoke about this in her thesis. So perhaps you can begin by explaining to us what these ideals are, particularly here in Ghana. In our present consumer capitalist culture, the body is on constant display. Then in Ghana, beauty standards have become very important to young women. So there are all sorts of activities that are being taken by urban Ghanaian women to shape and sculpt their bodies in different ways, from toning their skin, bleaching their skin, and wearing waist trainers, to shape their bodies in a certain way. We have someone here who's actually gone through some of these modifications you're talking about. Fakadi is a social media sensation here in Ghana, and she has also openly spoken about, you know, bleaching your skin or correcting your body in one way or another. Can you tell me why it is you felt you needed to do this? Because um, basically I thought of lightening my skin to fit into the criteria of girls the men are interested in. So it's because of men, the yeah, male gaze patriarchy. For the, yeah, for their attention, for everything on the social media platform. Yeah, when you're a bit lighter, you get more attention. So looking back at your life, because I've seen some of your before and after pictures, uh -huh. and really, it's truly unbelievable yeah. how you've changed mm -hmm. so dramatically. Mm -hmm. How has your life changed? Are people viewing you different? Yeah, Are you getting what you uh, were yeah, after, after the skin lightening, and I turned into Fakadi. Before the skin lightening, I was in your name. So that's the changes that I had. And um, yeah, life was pretty good. You got um, famous and all that thing. You got the attention from the men. You get deals from maybe model contracts and all that. Yeah. yeah. We did go to the streets and ask the people here in Accra, what do you think beauty is? And this is what they had to say. I mean, mostly uh, I'm interested in girls uh, who are light-skinned girls. A woman that is slim, not too slim, but a medium. But I don't fancy fat women. When the skin is more bright and is glowing, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah. I want my ass a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I want to no, look I... my ass. I want my ass bigger. I want my hips a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> but I like my up. I love the way my other body parts are. I wouldn't want to change anything because um, I feel like I'm um, actually perfect the way I am. You know, I love the way I am. Uh, well, let's come to Poetra, who's a performing artist here in Accra. Uh, and you've spoken quite a bit about not altering yourself in the way that Fakadi has, but truly the feminist wave says that women should have the choice to do whatever it is that they want. So where is the line? We have to expand what it means to be beautiful. Beauty standards are inherently racist. The Western ideal says that if you aren't thin, if you aren't white, if you aren't in close proximity to whiteness, you aren't beautiful. At the same time, we have to know the difference between enhancing our features and desperately wanting to change who we are. We have to be able to tell the balance, the difference between I am pretty, I want to use makeup, that's fine. Or I don't want, this is not who I want. I want to completely and drastically change my features. That line has to be drawn. But I mean, can you blame Fakadi? Because she's mm -hmm. saying, yes, it's about the male gaze, but I've also heard it said here in Ghana that specific advertisements for jobs will ask for fairer skinned women. And I want to find out if you've had this level of thinking where you're like, am I not good enough because of my skin tone? I haven't personally on a personal scale, but she's completely right. It's not just um, an individual level, not just like a, a male gaze. It's the entire industry. There's a beauty currency. And that's why we need to expand what it means to be beautiful. Whatever your features are, whether your nose is big, whether your mouth, your lips are full, that is beautiful. Okay, um, so we come to you now. 
<laughs> Wendy. Yes. So you look absolutely stunning right Thank now. Thank you. Yeah, but it's my understanding that, you know, it costs a lot to look like this. Yes. Tell me about that journey. When you're young, you're watching TV, and that's where a lot of dreams start from. I wanted to be on TV, you know, be a news person, and I started forming my dreams. But I had issues. There were these, like, mosquitoes. I don't know if you know. If it bites me, it starts to itch. Mm. So I have to scratch it so it gets sore, and then it leaves marks for years. So that was my condition. And I was trying to solve it. So in trying to solve that problem, I was using medication, soaps, and all that. And I started getting lighter. People would tell you, oh, you're looking good. And I started accepting it, you know, that looking lighter, I'm looking good. Mm. So I kept going. I'd like to come back to Emilia because why? H how did we get here? Why is it that we as Africans, black Africans, are in a black society and we are still like yearning for westernized beauty ideals? Uh, poetry alluded to racism initially, but what are the other factors? In, in everything that we see around our advertisements, you see a predominantly lighter representation of Ghanaian women. So we grow up looking at these pictures and consciously or unconsciously, we internalize this. It's, yeah. it's a very long you know, history of you know, colonization and we internalizing that. It's getting better, so people are gradually embracing people of darker shades, but we still have a very long, long way to go. Okay, Fakadi, I'd like to come to you because we're being told now that we're embracing darker skin tones. Uh, but beyond your skin complexion, you obviously have this ideal body shape right now. I mean, we can't tell because you're pregnant, but anybody who cares to go to your social media will see. What do people tell you on your socials and how does that make you feel? It makes you feel confident about yourself, especially when men are raising praises on you, when um, companies are all after you for advertisements and everything. So, okay, let me ask a very direct question. Uh -huh. Do you think if you were slightly darker, if your figure was more like mine and less like yours, you would get less work? Yes, you will get the job, but the payment, there's difference in it. Let's say a light person is taking 5,000 cities, they will give you a dark person 2,000, 3,000. Um, do you feel like you're doing something harmful to the young Ghanaians who are following you when they see you advertising products to lighten their skin or when you have photos where you're showing them, look, this is the beauty standard, this is the ideal? Um, I think um, making money is not harmful. So anything <laughs> that you make money from is not harmful. Oh, okay. So far as um, is that decision is their choice. So. But obviously not everybody who follows you is <laughs> able to make that decision because maybe they're not over the age of 18. Then you don't have to follow me then. Okay. For yeah. you, it's that clear. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's come to Mr. Nkrumah here because obviously you are specifically in charge of chemistry and uh, cosmetics at the FDA. And yet we're hearing young women here say, hey, I have access to bleaching products. It's so easy to get them online. What are the challenges of regulating some of these products and what are they? Some of these chemicals um, are medicinal. And for medicinal products, it's used for a limited period of time. There are others who also adulterate these products with mercury, and mercury is a banned substance. So some of these products that are known to be quicker and faster for you to get what you expect of the skin color, that is to reduce the melanin production that gives you the dark shade, it has effects on your liver, on your kidneys, Let's come to Dr. Levi Ankara. He's actually a plastic surgeon, but you deal specifically with corrective plastic surgeon. Uh, but uh, Mr. Nkrumah has alluded to some of the ingredients that are in these products. Yeah. What are the long-term implications of using some of these products, which appear to be harmless? And by the way, I should also mention to our viewers that I have read, and correct me if I'm wrong, panel, that there are women who will even take tablets while they're pregnant in the hopes that their babies will become fairer, and some even go as far as applying some of these creams on their babies. Is this true? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Yeah, so, so, I mean, uh, this is wild for me. Yeah. We produce steroids normally in our bodies, but we produce them on certain occasions, mostly in stress situations. Bringing in exogenous steroids, that steroids coming from outside, causes changes in the body that you can't see. Yes, your skin gets lighter, but just psychologically, you could have depression, mood swings, and all sorts of stuff. You could have things that happen to the, the master gland, that's the pituitary gland in the brain, 
Um, you could get cataracts, um, mostly to the skin. The skin thins out, and you are easily susceptible to minor injuries cause tears in the skin. Okay. Um, well, then let me come to Fakadi, because you've mentioned some very scary things that could be associated with the use of steroids. Now, I don't know what you've used to lighten your skin. Yeah, uh, are you happy to tell us what it was? Um, first, um, you start with um, local black soap, uh -huh, which is very high in potassium. And as time goes on, you want to upgrade. They have IV, um, those infusions you take, beauty infusions, glutathion injections, pills, and all to make your skin lighter. Yeah, yeah. and so now that you're pregnant, I'm assuming, are you still using them? No, no, or? No, 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 no. Okay, does it scare you or worry you when you hear the doctor talk about the long-term implications that yeah, you could possibly definitely. have? Sometimes you get scared. You get scared. Are you human? So you think about, oh, what will happen when I'm old? But right now you're raking in the cash, so you're like... Yeah, yeah. All right. So speaking about your baby, if uh -huh. you'll allow me, mm -hmm. would you be the kind of person who would take a tablet to lighten your baby's complexion? No. Are you worried that you will look nothing like no, your no, child? No, 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 no. I don't... I don't um, I don't think I have worries about that. When she grows up, she has her own right to decide if she wants to lighten up or remain dark skin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's come back to Mr. Nkrumah here because, again, where are these products coming in through? Where are they coming from? What, what's, where is the difference, where is the gap coming in between your wanting to regulate and them seeping into the market? We have the main point of entry. That's the Thermaport, the airports, that's the KIA and other approved entry points. But there are people, because of the intention and what they want to do, will smuggle them in. Glutathione, as you said, is, it has medicinal value, but it's not been approved as a cosmetic product. And no product, if you take in or you swallow or inject, can be a cosmetic product. Cosmetic products are used on the surface of, of the skin. So basically, there's no such thing as safe no, no, skin lightning? No, there, there's nothing like that. Okay. So people taking it with the intention of lightening their babies, definitely you should be expecting some deformities when these children are born. The FDA on its own, obviously you're not able to put a cap on this thing. And we're hearing that there's advertisements everywhere. Should we rethink what regulation is when it comes to the beauty industry? Okay. That rethinking has been done years ago. Then why isn't it working? Okay, people are not complying. For instance, people, hydroquinone was the ingredient of choice in cosmetic products. So now the FDA does not permit it in cosmetic products because it has to use as a medicinal ingredient. So for medicinal ingredients, it's permitted. But for cosmetic products, it's a no-no, just like steroids. Yeah. We all have choices. What happens is, for that reason, then you put a strain on the healthcare system of the country. Then a lot of people who did not live responsibly are now at the end of the tail. We have safer options. So why are you not using them than right. using things which are yeah, quicker I can and faster? See, I can see some hands popping up. Are you saying that the government is revoked of responsibility because it's a personal choice? That the government is like they, they don't have any responsibility any of maybe not fda but like a sect of the government that decides okay this is something that's affecting a percentage of our population especially if it's a strain on the healthcare. i would say there is a responsibility every individual is the duty of the government to ensure the safety of every individual so there are measures that have been put in place to ensure that there's enforcement so if some of these products are found on you and it's not gone through due process, there are sanctions which can result in fine and even you ending up in jail. Surely, I want that, to add this. Let me, let me ask, doesn't that end up punishing the victim? Because if I bought a product off the shelf, I don't know if it's gone oh, through due process. If I buy it online, okay. I don't know if it's gone through due process. So what we have is we have a um, list of approved products and it's on our website. So we send it out there, you visit our website, you see the list of products, and then you buy from that list. Petra, I want to come to you because social media, you're influencing on that space, but to what extent is it responsible for some of these flawed ideas of what beauty is? And what are you doing to change that? It's not a one-sided conversation. It's not something that you can say we are going to fix it with self-love. 
or that we're going to fix it with this. It's an entire industry that has to come together to work it. In an era, dark skinned was deemed as ugly. In an era, full lips are seen as ugly. In another era, fat people are seen as ugly. So we need to expand what it means to be beautiful. We're all over social media. That's a medium that we can use both on a personal level, both on a communal level. And that's how we can change things. Okay, but you know, when you say that we need to expand our ideas of what beauty is, we feed off of each other, right? So I'm curious to know from you, Wendy, for example, when you were dealing with your skin conditions, what were people saying to you? What are some of those things that led you to think, you know what, this is important enough to me that I need to change it? As a young girl in school, you know how kids are. They're making fun of you. They're calling you names, you know. And as a little girl, in Africa, you're not allowed to even speak up. So you deal with it personally, and you want to do everything possible that you can to change the situation. So when she says we, 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 I'm asking myself, who is the we? Hmm. Because it's a personal problem, by the end of the day, People are telling you what to do. Okay, so Poetra, let's come back to you because it seems like we're circling back to a question I had asked earlier. The question of choice versus acceptance. So when she says, who are we? It's ex exactly the problem. It's not just a personal level. It's a communal thing. It's everybody who has hands in. So you as somebody who has Instagram, you have a part to play. A mother at home has a part to play. Okay, Amelia, part of our presentation includes our hair. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a very interesting story regarding how you decided to become natural. Yes, so before I traveled for my PhD studies, my hair was relaxed. So when I went to Hong Kong, my supervisor asked me one day when we were having our meetings that, Amelia, why do you have your hair straight? I had actually like fixed the weave and it was so itchy. So every now and then, you know, I'll keep <laughs> tapping my head. And she asked me, Amelia, why are you putting yourself through all this trouble? And I said, it's easier to manage my hair this way. And she asked, why would it be easier to manage anything than your natural hair? And I had never been faced with that question. Coming out of secondary school, and relaxing your hair is sort of like a rite of passage. So I, I had not really confronted, you know, those questions. So thinking back, and even while I was in Hong Kong, it was so difficult to, you know, keep my hair relaxed because there were no hairdressers around. The people around did not know how to deal with my hair. And a few African salons were charging like outrageous prices. So at some point I said, I can't be going through all of this. Yeah. And I, I just cut my hair and it's been like a very interesting process of just, you know, embracing my hair and keeping it natural. Okay. Uh, Fakadi, earlier we spoke about, oh wait, Wendy has something to say. Let's come to you first. So for me, hair is a very, very big topic. But as you've touched on it, I just wanted to ask um, Amelia something. So the question is, if you hadn't gone to Hong Kong, do you think you still get that awakening in Africa that, oh, my natural hair is beautiful as its cause? Yeah. And would you blame an African or a girl living in Africa that, that has, you know, a hair that is permed or wants to wear um, a Western weave? to look beautiful, would you blame her? So basically you're asking her if she's judging you right now. No, not me personally, <laughs> I, I'm good, but would you okay. chat like, yes. Let's hear I back from you, Emily. if I had not gone to Hong Kong, I probably would not have, you know, gone natural. And that is not to say that there were not representations of natural hair. I think people like Poi Chasan, so I mean, as far as I've known her and followed her work, she has always carried her hair natural. And I think around 2010, there was sort of like a renaissance, you know, of going back to our roots and, you know, going back to our natural hair, embracing our natural identities. But then it never struck a chord with me, ironically. And it had to take an outsider, you know, to, to make to, to, to make it so obvious to me what, what, was, what was so apparent that I could not see before. So it, it's been so internalized, like I said, our educational system is reinforcing it because we don't get to manage our hair till after school. We always keep our hair short down. I'd like to hear from the panel, what do you think we can do, not necessarily to change the beauty standards because they're fluid, as Amelia said, but to make them healthier so that we're not having people landing in hospital and risking their lives in order to comply to a certain standard of beauty. I'd like to hear from the doctor first. Um, if you are using a, a product, a medicine, which can, can change your body as a whole, then there is something you should be cautious about because it could have long-term effects. Okay, 
Amelia, where is the difference between my body, my choice, and this is harmful to not just your body, but to society, and how do we move forward from that? You know, we have a very popular saying, Sankofa. We should really go back and try and understand how things were before, you know, colonization and, right. you know, even slavery and all so of that. So self-love on a completely deep level. A, all right, uh, let's come to this side. Recommendations of how we can make this industry healthier, happier for all of us. When I accepted myself and close family members and friends who really, really, truly loved me, they told me the truth that, see, you are bleaching, stop saying toning. I, I really accepted it and I appreciate that till today. And it has changed my mindset about, you know, my skin and how I look. So today I know that there are some specific ingredients. If I see them in any product I run, one, parabens. And there's something called quota. If you see ingredients like that in a product, ladies, please run away from that. That's my advice. All right, uh, Petra. Accepting yourself also means that not perpetuating another margin of oppression. So if you are dark skinned, it means that you, and you are skinny. It means that you don't also bully somebody who's fat because we are all in the same industry. So that it's, it's a communal effort. Yeah. Individual, we have a part to play. As a community, we have a part to play. And as a country, a country that loves itself, loves its people, commits to long-term life and make sure that everybody's fine. I like that. So borrowing Chimamanda's words, finding inclusion through diversity. All right, Mr. Nkrumah, how can institutions help to correct some of the errors that we're finding in the industry right now? Okay. Well, our mandate is ensuring the safety, protecting the health and safety of the public. And we do this through public education. There need to be a lot of public education and interaction so that the general public will know the need because there are procedures, there are systems in place to ensure that products that come onto our markets are of the right quality, they are safe, and they are effective to use. Uh, and finally, Fakadi, let's hear from you. Uh, with me, my slogan is my body, my choice. That's it. And we shouldn't copy blindly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Emilia wants to start an entirely new yeah, debate. New but colonized beauty ideals. Okay, let's but... just embrace ourselves in our authentic, natural forms. Yeah. All right, I couldn't think of a better place to end this debate. Thank you so much. Embrace yourself in whatever shape and style you come in. If beauty is in the eye of the beholder, perhaps we should become our new beholders. I'm Edith Kimani. Thank you for watching.